Hello and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. We got some really great feedback last time of how we opened the podcast, so we're going to continue on that path. So I'll go ahead and pass it over to Austin. Austin, how was your weekend this past weekend? Uh, good. A little, uh, little crazy, a little chaotic. Um, whole month of October has been a little crazy, so November is looking up. I'm, re- I'm very, very excited for November. Uh, to just uh, put October in the past, but we're in we're in our new house and. Um, you know, get, moving into a new house, as you guys know, you guys did it pretty recently, right? So getting everything situated and some things go your way, some things don't. Uh, so we got internet now. I'm here. I know you guys haven't, you guys listening, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you guys haven't seen me in a, in a while and that's why. Um, so yeah, weekend all around is pretty good. We got our old, old place cleaned out and everything, you know, situated there. And yeah, it's just one big, deep, long breath out <laughs> of a weight lifted off my shoulders essentially is to explain what november is for me i think yeah so yeah it definitely is a uh, a win in and of itself to be able to have everything cleared out of the old place and coming into the new one so i'm excited for your guys's new space for sure how was your guys weekend it was good. I mean, we got to Sue's birthday was Friday. So, uh, it was, it was a fun day as a whole. Well, really on Friday, we worked most of the day, mm-hmm. but then into the evening, we had a party that we were going to. Um, and we are, Sue and I are notoriously late for a lot of things, not on purpose, but it's just how life goes, especially social things. Just don't anticipate for us to be right when you tell us to be somewhere. Um, so we were late to this party, but the kicker for this is that Brandon and Mackenzie were coming to surprise Sue. And so there was very tight parameters around when we needed to be at this party. So I was getting very flustered. I would like to say that we (laughs) would have been on time, but it was sprung on me like right as we were starting to get ready that I also was getting my sister ready. So I will say that That I was going to be on time for a for this one thing, I will say not everything, but for this thing, <laughs> I was. Um, but yes, we were a little bit late. Uh, but fashion like party started at seven thirty. We got there around like seven forty five eight. I think that's good timing to arrive at a party. Sure, it just that's didn't go fashionable. With the, yeah. Exactly, we don't want to be the, the first plan. ones there. Yeah, we didn't know anyone, so we really didn't want to be the first ones there. We in turn did not necessarily need to go. It was more so about the surprise <laughs> um, because we did not converse with anyone new necessarily, yes. but. As a whole, Brandon McKenzie were uh, excellent at uh, surprising Sue. Normally, I ruin, not normally, but I am not great with keeping secrets. And I was able to keep a secret for seven whole days within this. So that was huge. Um, so Brandon McKenzie got to surprise Sue. She was very... Very, Very surprised. surprised. I was shocked at how surprised she was, honestly. <laughs> um, and then Saturday, we spent the whole day with uh, Brandon McKenzie. We got to go to our favorite restaurant, Jeff Ruby's. Um, as you guys know from the last episode, Sue loves to give out some free shout outs. So do you have anything to to say about Jeff Ruby's? Jeff Ruby's is just the place to be. It has the best ambiance, the best service, and the highest quality food. And it is like one of the only restaurants that we go to that I will get like an appetizer, the bread, an entree really excited for the sides and get a dessert which and a drink which really does not happen anywhere but jeff ruby's that was a very bougie way of telling you that you like the place but (laughs) well it's like what'd you guys get for dessert well so first i will say in regards to your bougie comment it is just speaking to the quality because i won't eat the bread at a lot of places because it's just not that good and i won't get dessert at a lot of places because it's just not that good so at jeff ruby's i'll go in because it is that good Uh, i mean it's not an outback steakhouse i think it's 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 important to clarify step up (laughs) it's like saying i think it's like you're Trying to be bougie about like an Outback Steakhouse would be a sort of a problem, a problem, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay. You know, it's an, it can be nice if it's newer and the staff <laughs> newer. cares about their job in any way possible. Yeah. But like Jeff Ruby's is like a legit place, yeah. you know, the, the, everyone takes pride in what that place is. And if you don't, I doubt you, you work there, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. so, um, I'm sure they'll get rid of you super quick. So. I mean, to defend you a little bit. Yes, on the thank bougie. you. I appreciate like, it's hard to, it. It's hard to describe. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to describe a bougie place non-bougie. Exactly. You know, it's like, thank it's you. not Long John Silver's. Or outback, you know? <laughs> oh, definitely not Long John Silver's. <laughs> uh, but for dessert, they did give a, me like a dessert like sample platter for my birthday but we ended up ordering the butter pie. Now, if you are at the Jeff Ruby's in Louisville, order the peanut butter pie. It'll change your life 
you're welcome. But they do not have the peanut butter pie at the location in Columbus. So uh, the Buckeye pie is really great. And then the butter pie is really great. I love the butter pie. Yeah. So what's a butter pie? Is it just what it sounds like? (laughs) Basically, um, my mom calls it ooey gooey cake. I don't know. That's what she used that to make, sense. and it's like the exact. I think the butter cake is what it's actually called, but she called it ooey gooey for all growing mm-hmm. up. So, but it's very it's so good. There's right. like pecans and stuff on mm-hmm. it, but it's kind of like if you would take, like literally what you would think of butter pie, and yeah. add pecans to it. Like that's what okay. you got. Some brown sugar, add it all in. It's like crispy on the top, soft in the, in the middle. middle. Yeah. You get some vanilla ice cream with it. Mm-hmm. It's really good. It is. So it's just heaven for your taste buds. Exactly. Yes. You if got you're, fat, <laughs> sugar, salt, oh, yeah. everything. If you're in Vegas yeah. and you want a good butter pie, <laughs> go to, what is it? Del I knew you were going to do this. I have no idea. I, I think it know. is Del Frisco's. Del Frisco's Steakhouse. I knew she was going to do that. Don't even go for the food. <laughs> just go for dessert and get the, the butter pie. Good. The bu- food is still good, but the butter pie is yeah. super good. And then Sunday, we wept um, on Sunday night uh, specifically. Sunday night. Uh, the Packers played probably one of their better games, to yes. be honest with you. Um, but the Bills are just that much better. Yes. Um, You're having a rough go at it this year, Alex. I know. I but my fantasy you know. team is not. I did win my fantasy game, which was very exciting. I lost mine, but still, season's going okay. I will say, you know, just to defend the Packers, we had Watson, who got a concussion during the game, and he's been Watkins. struggling. What? Watson. Watson. Watkins is someone else who's been dealing with the injury, but Watson's been dealing with a hamstring slash groin injury. He was out after our first few plays of the game. Watkins was finally back off of IR. Uh, Cobb is sitting out because he's injured, as well as Lazard is injured. And so we really only have Dobbs, which is a rookie. And then we have another rookie that played their first snaps of their NFL game and got their first touchdown. Torre is his last name. I had to look up how to pronounce it. Uh, so we're, we're missing a lot of pieces. And then we had a defensive player ejected. We're missing <laughs> our left tackle. Well, we had our left tackle missing the right tackle. And then we also had one of our key defensive players of Campbell get hurt during the game. Yeah. And, and more so Sue sharing all these points with you is not because she thinks that you guys care. It's more so that she wants to showcase her knowledge <laughs> and how far it's come. I and think you do I'm pretty care. impressed, honestly. I, I mean, I'm impressed. I, li- I sit and listen uh, and I'm very impressed. It's pretty legit, honestly. He so, just thought I was saying the wrong name and I, I know. had to crack I try to call him so. out and then she you know, throws it back in my face. This yeah. is good. But Aaron Jones did his thing. We he all did. know he's a dog <laughs> and uh, we're going to see it looking up from here, I think. Well, they play the Lions this week, so, so pray to God be. <laughs> we we end this lose lo- this losing streak. Because if you guys lose to the Lions, I just hang it up. Yeah, yeah. season's over. Just Gosh. everybody give up. Our season's Sundays over. are free from now on, yeah. especially Sunday yeah. evenings. But uh, speaking of getting into you know football and the holiday season coming up, everyone knows football and Thanksgiving is a must. Uh, but we wanted to be able to talk about what it looks like for navigating through the holidays, as we know that's always kind of a hot button topic around this time. And we wanted to be able to give you guys a resource, talk through some different things that we go through within clients, how we personally handle Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, or whatever else holidays that you celebrate during this time, and just being able to give you a roadmap and some helpful tips along the way. Absolutely. What's uh, What's the first topic we want to dig into? Number one, don't be an asshole. That's all you got to (laughs) know. But truthfully, where we coined that term or why we say that term is we think it's pretty all-encompassing. It's kind of like the concept if you were to say, would an asshole eat like this? And if the answer is yes, then don't eat like that. And being able to realize that indulging or being able to enjoy holiday foods doesn't immediately equal being an asshole or eating like an asshole. And so being able to know what your hunger cues are, not just scar scarfing down food or throwing down food because of the circumstance, but really being able to take a look at what the plan is or what your holiday plans are and being able to see what your goals are, what flexibility you want to have, and then executing that instead of going in without a plan and just kind of balling and then ending up eating like an asshole, which can not only affect you mentally, but then of course, physically um, and being able to slow down your go- to your goal. But that doesn't always mean that eating for the holidays is going to stop you from reaching your goals. There's a place for being able to enjoy that and that still be in line with your goals. I was watching a, um, a podcast yesterday that I, I thought, uh, so I, I regularly watch Nate Land 
uh, which is a Nate Bargatze podcast with other comedians, um, other great comedians. And Nate, <clears throat> this in context of this uh, conversation, Nate has lost a significant amount of weight. I mean, he he was he was pushing towards 200, I want to say, and or at least 190. And and he's not like a super he's not a muscular guy. So like it wasn't great weight, I will say. Um, and that he's like down in the one sixties in, you know, a few months. And so he's, he's had a, his own sort of, you know, fat loss journey, his own sort of recomposition of his taking control again of his, of his physique and his body and the way he feels. And he made a comment yesterday when I was listening about making decisions around food that have more to do, have less to do with the, the moment and have more to do with the way he he's going to feel afterwards and the days after that. Right. And, you know, obviously as, you know, as coaches, people who've been in this world for a long time, we understand that. And, and a lot of times we make decisions based off of that, but like Nate's a comedian, so he doesn't really, he doesn't come from this world. And it, it's, he's also someone who admittedly and will brag about and probably has stock in McDonald's and <laughs> Coca-Cola. Right. So he, well, you know, still to this day, we'll say I, I will do anything in my power to eat McDonald's every day of my life. I love it that much. Right. Um, and so that's that's coming from someone that like thoroughly enjoys every fast food restaurant chain that you could imagine um, and seeks it out, you know, eats whole bags of gummy bears, you name it. Right. Um, <clears throat> and co coming from someone like that, you know, that really just stuck out as a statement from him to me. You know, it was just you know, from the first episode, I, you know, I started listening to the podcast and now it's crazy. Cause like he used to just brag about like, or just talk about his evenings. He's like, I sit down watch a movie, eat a whole bag of gummy bears, a pint of ice cream. And he's just like, I'm just, I was super tired. I just never felt good. And, you know, leading up to, to now it's crazy to even hear him talk about that coming from, you know, a coaching perspective or a training perspective. It's like, man, I'm just proud to even listen to someone who just used to eat like that or used to kind of walk go through life like that and now to make decisions based purely off of like look i know it's healthy i know it's gonna get me closer to the goal i have but also just more generally it's just gonna make me feel good mm -hmm. and in that moment right after the meal and then it's gonna make me feel good the days after and the better i can make those decisions the better i'm gonna feel right and i think that's along the same line of you know, don't be an asshole to others, but don't be an asshole to yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just something that you're, you're not going to regret in my opinion, because we've all been there, the three of us. I mean, we've all eaten, we've all been gluttonous on this, mm -hmm. on yeah, the holiday, you know, <laughs> throughout the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you name it. Um, but I can say like, I don't enjoy that feeling after Thanksgiving where like you have to unbutton your pants and like you're in this food coma and like, you don't have energy for the next few days. You know, I just, there's not one part of me that enjoys that. And I just, for the longest time, I just like did it because I was like, well, this is what Thanksgiving's about, you know? And then the more I got into to what we're doing and the more I got into like, you know, bodybuilding and worrying about my nutrition and stuff and, and learning about how good I could feel while still enjoying those foods, it was a complete, you know, it was a complete shift in my mindset and, and, surrounding the way that I look at food and, and approach food, especially around the holidays. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah, and I'm glad that you brought it up of just feeling like you are being gluttonous or you are overindulging because of what surrounds the holiday. So I wanted to be able to talk about that of like when you were growing up or when you think about Thanksgiving, what do you really think about? I was very fortunate growing up that all of my grandparents lived 
by each other. So we would go to my uh, my mom's parents, and then we'd go to my dad's parents, and then we'd go to my great grandparents in the middle there. So it was something that was like painfully around family. So I was very fortunate in that sense that it wasn't so food driven. It was more about pacing yourself so that you could eat at all locations <laughs> because each grandparent would have been very offended if I got to the lo- next location and was like not able to eat. So it was one of those things where I only really ate one plate or like a plate and a half type situation because I was pacing myself. And so uh, I was fortunate in that sense to be able to do that, but it was also um, delicious, delicious treats as well. Yeah. And for you, Austin, what was it like within growing up or just kind of what you think about when you think about Thanksgiving? Um, so I come from a very big extended family. You know, my my parents were divorced when I was, you know, when I was super young and we just have all these big extended parts of our family. And now you include, you know, I'm going on six years of being married. And so that's, you know, the past six years has also been like not only my family, but my wife's family. And so usually the day is surrounding has travel involved. <laughs> that's like the first thing that I, I note now. Um, but like growing up, you know, it was we were always around family, family, football and, and food. You know, that that's Thanksgiving in my family. And honestly, if we're being if we're prioritizing those things first in my family, it's football, family, <laughs> food. <Yeah>. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, like, if you know anything about me or my family, it's it's football, family, food. Um, so, you know, it just everyone's sitting around a TV watching football, watching the games, um, kind of going up, you know, intermittently and getting a plate, getting a just, you know, getting something. Um, but yeah, football, family and food for sure. Yeah. I think that for myself, I'm very thankful that it was about being thankful. And while there was a lot of food involved, um, my mom did a great job of not only including us within the cooking so that we were a part of it, but also each person got to pick a dish. And so each of us have our own favorite Thanksgiving dish. And I'm also kind of picky when it comes to (laughs) Thanksgiving food. There's only a few things that I really enjoy. And so I always prioritize those. And I never ended up feeling too full full or overstuffed because it just wasn't about how much can you eat in this instance. And we also were a family that we kind of had a breakfast planned, but then it was just snacking the rest of the day. And so even if you did, let's say, overeat when it came to that actual Thanksgiving meal, as a net um, of the day, you probably ended up in a, a solid place, especially if you were prioritizing your digestion or just how you felt as a whole. And then I just realized as I got older, so many people glorified all of the food that was involved. And then it became just about the food for not my family, but a lot of people that I was interacting with around the holiday and especially getting into college and people just talking about the holiday. It was food, 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 food. And that was very different from me because that wasn't my experience and I didn't have this extreme affinity for Thanksgiving food. Um, So it was something that I was able to navigate around a little bit differently. But I think it's important to bring up of, hey, what was your environment when it came to the holidays, whether it's Thanksgiving or another one? Um, What was the attitude around food? And what do you possibly need to take some time to reflect about what your new attitude is? Kind of like what Austin said of now that he's focused more on his health and he's focused more on how he feels, it looks a little bit different than it did in the past. And I think that being able to give yourself the permission for the holiday to look different, but still hold traditions is really special because I still hold a lot of traditions within the holidays that I celebrate with my family and with loved ones, but it's not exactly the same when it comes to the food. Uh, But I've given myself permission that it's still a tradition and I'm still able to indulge and enjoy myself, but it's in a little bit different way. Yeah, I think that um, within the the food selection and those different factors and coming back to the component within eating like an asshole, I think that getting to a point where you're prioritizing the time with people rather than it being like this all out situation and you're, you've lowered your food all week for this one moment of, of blowout is kind of a, something that we certainly want to avoid as, as people, especially within our clients and those different factors um, are navigating towards the holidays. Yeah. 
And I think one important thing and the reason that this is labeled how to navigate the holidays instead of how to survive the holidays is the way that you use words is extremely important. It's the same reason that within our coaching that we don't use the term cheat meal, even if someone might make, uh, it's about the same as a free meal technically, or when we're really looking at what we're doing in it, it might be, but the verbiage we use, the words we use, the connotations really mean something. And so recognizing the holidays aren't meant to be survived. And so being able to take a stance of, okay, what does this holiday mean to me? And I don't just want to have to survive as I get through it. I want to either be able to thrive through it or just really be able to be present in it and enjoy it. And so what I normally have clients do when it comes to the holidays is I ask them to reflect. What are their least favorite things as far as the outcomes from past holidays? Is it that they've been too full, that their digestion is off, that they feel like they have a sugar rush, that they start breaking out after the holidays, whatever it may be? I ask them to reflect back on the holidays and what they haven't liked from it. And then I want to hear what they've loved from it. What are your family traditions? What are the must-haves? Or what does it look like for your family? I know for Alex, with him saying, okay, we went to three different houses on the same day. That was never the same for my family. We're just at our own home. And so being able to hear, okay, what does your normal schedule look like instead of just comparing it to mine of seeing what are your traditions? What does the schedule look like? Are you traveling throughout the week, throughout the day? Um, What are the different events that you're a part of? And then asking them to pick like, which ones do you truly care about? Because I can be present for some, but not all always indulge in some, and that's okay as well. And so being able to pick out what do I really care about in this instance, or if I had to only pick a handful of things to do, like what would I really want to do? And I always bring it back to that because I've had to relearn my relationship with food to a certain degree of what do I truly want instead of just what's in front of me or what is the connotation of this meal really combined. Yeah, I think that's a great, great point to bring up. And I'm more like Alex where, you know, due to my extended families and stuff like that, like it's, it's not, uh, it's not an out there thing that I'll be at three or four different houses on Thanksgiving. And then the next day after Thanksgiving, we go to one or two more places because we couldn't fit it in on the day before or whatever, you know, and that's the same for me with Christmas or any holiday really. So I think that's a great point about being present. And that's something that I've really taken, uh, taken a lead with in my own life, but, you know, advice for clients is, you know, be present and focus on the time with your family, the, the, the cousins you don't get to see very often, or maybe once a year. And that's a big part of like holidays for me growing up was it was really the only time because part of a big part of my family lives in, uh, Northern Indiana. And so Growing up in Southern Indiana, you know, it's Indiana is a very long and slender state. So, you know, it's a five or, you know, five hour drive to get up there. So you don't see them too often. And so I may only see them once a year. And so it was all about like seeing my cousins, seeing my uh, aunts and uncles and seeing every part of that family that I didn't get to see very often. And so it became more about, you know, just the time with family, having presence with that family, having good conversation, trying not to hang out around the food. Um, but honestly, for me, like, I don't have, fortunately, I don't have that pull towards that pull towards the food as much in general for me. It's just, I enjoy a few things kind of like, you know, kind of like you, Sue, I'm, Alex, do you have a few things or you like everything? <laughs> I, there's a few things that I, I'm obsessed with, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, for me, it's, for me, it's like. Uh, the turkey combination with mashed potatoes and gravy, like that combination, unbeatable for me. And then like, it's the only time in the year I will eat pumpkin pie. (laughs) I don't know what it is, but it's like, it's an association thing for me. Um, It's the same reason I don't eat dinner in bed. It's like, I I have associations with things and it's like, this is when I eat pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. And this is when I go full send on the whipped cream. And this is when I enjoy just a decadent piece of pie. Um, so those three, th- like those, those two things, really, those, the combination of, of that, uh, turkey, mashed potatoes and gravy, and then like the pumpkin pie. And as long as my, I'll have that at like each house we go to. And like, that's really all I focus on. Cause I don't like the other foods really at all. Like, I don't like stuffing. I don't like cranberry, whatever that thing's called. I don't <laughs> like 
all the other things, you know, the entrapments of, of Thanksgiving. And so it's really about conversation, seeing the family, being present with that, um, and then just not hanging around the food. And if I am hungry, uh, I typically hang around. I'm typically the one that brings fruits and vegetables to every to wherever I'm going. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to know there's at least fruits and vegetables where I'm going. So I'll get a fruit platter or a vegetable platter or whatever that thing is where you get a bunch of different types of veggies and fruits. I always bring that. And sometimes I'm the only one that eats it. And that's great uh, because I know that I'm going to be in a good spot with, you know, things we'll talk about later on, but like fiber intake and um, just getting in your normal food that you would eat on a normal day. Uh, and not just, again, eating like a, I'll change the word to an, not eating like an idiot. Um, <laughs> I, we said the other word too. <laughs> you know, <nothing> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, just don't be an idiot. Yeah. yeah. And I love that you brought up of, okay, I'm not normally about the food. And that also comes from your fueling yourself before you go into these meals or the days or week leading into it. And then you are eating in a way that suits you. And so I find that a lot of people feel like, oh, because I'm going to eat so much in these days, I need to lower my food throughout the week or the few days before I need to not eat the day of Thanksgiving until this meal. And that puts you in a really compromised position position because you haven't gotten any nutrients or food in. So this is going to be the first thing your digestive system hits that hits your digestive system, which is a lot to ask of your digestive system, as well as then you are getting to a place that you're causing a lot of stomach discomfort because it's a large bolus of food and you're often even more hungry because you haven't eaten and had that satiation all day. And I think some people like to be that hungry going into the meal because they know it's going to be a bigger meal. But I know for for myself that eating that large bolus of food is never comfortable. And so going back to how does it make me feel during and after is what I always want to be able to ask myself. And sometimes just like Austin, it's good for the soul to have some of those foods like sweet potato casserole is one for me that like I that's not made often. And so I want to be able to enjoy that. And I want to be able to be present in that. But that doesn't mean that I have to starve myself all day. So for example, this past holiday, holiday, I believe that there was like monkey bread made for breakfast, which is a lot of carbs and fats, which is completely fine to be able to have if it's something you love. I'm not the hugest fan of monkey bread. I just made eggs for myself and was able to have that. I know I had some good nutrients. I also was able to get in some protein and some fats. Um, I believe I had carbs alongside with it. I just don't remember off the top of my head. And so then going into Thanksgiving lunch is when we have it, I was able to not be starving and be at a normal hunger level to eat a normal amount of food. Now, normal is relevant, of course, um, for each person, but for myself, it was a normal amount of food. And one other thing I really want to mention here is you don't have to eat it all at once. What I often do is I'll have like the turkey and the Hawaiian rolls because those are bomb as well. And I'll be able to wait a little bit, talk to people. And then if I am wanting some more food, go and get it because I don't want to waste food and I I'd much rather go back for seconds than have things left on my plate because there is a lot to be said of feeling like you need to clean your plate, especially if other people are, if you don't want to insult someone. And it's so much easier to go back for seconds than it is to be in a place where you have all this extra food on your plate and then you feel like you have to push it away. And so being able to kind of space it out and I'll even wait to be like, okay, I'm going to have the sweet potato casserole in a few hours um, because I want to be able to eat that and not be uncomfortably full. Speaking of sweet potato casserole, that's my favorite, but it's not actually sweet potato casserole, right? Oh, yours is, what do, what do they call them? Sweet potato like bombs or no. crescent? Descri I, describe it. Describe well, they're, it. They're, it? It's like a, a sweet potato. It's sweet potatoes stuffed into crescent rolls. And then on top of it, it's like butter and brown sugar and cinnamon that like bakes on top of it, it bakes in a tray of crescent rolls. And so then you have these like crescent rolls that are like falling apart that are so delicious of the sweet potatoes. Yeah, so. my my mom's mom was a, a cook that I never had a bad meal from. So growing up, Thanksgiving was something that I didn't have any food that I didn't like. Uh, the only food that she would make that I didn't enjoy, my grandmother was from the sticks of Kentucky. So she would eat chicken liver. Mm -hmm. um, even when she, like I 
she had me try that a couple of times. I hated it every single time, um, but she thoroughly enjoyed that chicken liver. Um, but those sweet potato casseroles were fantastic. I loved her stuffing. I haven't enjoyed stuffing since hers for whatever reason. I have not found one I liked, um, but yeah. Yeah. And I like within being able to look at Thanksgiving, also being able or the holidays in general, recognizing, okay, do I want to track or do I not want to track? And we have this conversation with clients a lot. And a majority of our clients don't track during those holidays. Now, it does depend on what their holiday schedule looks like. If they have six houses they're hitting up for the holidays, then we might have some parameters or some guidance um, in place instead of a all free for all, but being able to see what it looks like to have balance or harmony in that situation of recognizing what is going to be best for you in your situation. So for myself, um, there was a few times that I was ending a prep going into a holiday season. And so while I wasn't strictly tracking. I was very closely tracking um, to make sure that my hormones, I was supporting myself and I was being aware of how it was going to affect my mental health, my emotional health, and my physical health. And so while that holiday might have looked a little bit different, it was what I needed that year. And so instead of forcing myself into a situation of it's the holiday, just do it, I was able to really look at what is going to suit me, what is going to serve me in this instance, and recognizing that there are always going to come back around and you can always indulge in them again and not thinking this is the last time I'll ever eat this food. Yes, some of those foods you might only have once a year, but being able to make that a special time instead of a time where you're sick because of it's only once a year is an attitude that you want to be able to take towards it. And I think laying out the a pros and cons list of, of tracking versus not tracking and working through that with clients, because it's something where it's it's great that they're working with us through the holiday, but they're going to have many, many holidays past their time working with us and being able for them to see the options and, and the reasons why or why not they would or would not um, is important for them you know, long term because a big thing within our service is that they can uh, continue to utilize a lot of the tools past their time working with us. And this is really you know, through November and December and into January is such a great time to work with us as a staff because of those factors where we're so heavily dedicated and focused on the education of the clients, um, you know, throughout the process. And this is a big time because this is something that you're going to use long term for sure. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Yeah. So what are some of those things that you talk with with clients going into the holidays that we haven't mentioned yet? Like the pros and cons you're saying? Uh, the pros and cons are just other aspects that you talk about with your clients going into the holidays. Yeah, I think that hydration and movement are, are big. Um, being able to go on like a morning walk, getting in plenty of water going into the Thanksgiving festivities as a whole, maybe taking some of your family after you have uh, Thanksgiving lunch or dinner and going on a walk together, I think could be advantageous. Um, if you want to, getting a training session in before the day starts. I know that I personally enjoy to do that. It just feels good to me to get a good sweat in and then being able to relax the remaining of the day um, with family and, and those different factors. And so hydration and movement being the two big pieces, um, focusing on the, the moment with uh, your family. We've talked about that a bunch, but I think that being more present there rather than it being like, oh my gosh, I only get to eat this food one time a year. I have to maximize the amount of food that I'm consuming right now is, is really important. And then also just pacing yourself when you are eating, um, being something where it's like, it's not a race. I'm sure that your grandmother, your or you know, wh whomever you're eating with has made plenty. Uh, it's very rare that mm -hmm. there was no leftovers type situation. So give yourself some time. And I think those are, are big pieces. Yeah. And Austin, you had mentioned one that I wanted to bring back up of bringing the, the veggie trays or the fruit trays. And this is something I recommend even outside of the holidays. If someone's going to an event, maybe they are going to watch football all day or they're going to a Super Bowl party or a party in general. And so I normally recommend if you are in a place that you're unsure what the food situation is going to be, or even if you do know, being able to bring something that is for everyone. So it's not that you're just there with your own Tupperware eating your own meal 
meal and people might be off put by that. It's you are bringing something for the group. And even in Austin's situation, if he's the only one eating it, it does show of like, okay, I brought this for everyone. This was something I wanted to be able to share and to have in place. And it's okay if not everyone eats it, but I'll make like a buffalo chicken dip where I am aware of all the ingredients in it and can go ahead and take that to a Super Bowl party and enjoy it and not feel like I'm eating this because it's here and now it has dairy in it and I'm going to feel bad. I'm just able to feel good about what I'm eating. So when it comes to the holidays, maybe you make a side dish and I can almost guarantee the host is going to be extremely uh, thankful that you made a side dish because that puts one less thing on their plate. And so being able to get a little bit creative with how you go into the holidays instead of feeling like it has to be the same as you were growing up because you have different options at your fingertips this time. I think um, one thing I want to kind of build upon that, and those are, those are great points. One thing I want to build upon there is also if, you, if you're if you someone that's going to feel <clears throat> relatively comfortable going into this day, like you don't have any sort of weird associations with the day or this isn't a, a challenging day for you mentally or emotionally, you know, especially surrounding food, lead by example, be the person that sets the tone, right? And for me, that's kind of like bringing the fruit and veggie tray. Like, again, the state doesn't have to be about food and it can be, you know, it should be about family and being grateful and thankful that you're all, we all have this opportunity to live this life and be around people we love and, you know, hopefully get to do the things we love day in and day out. And it's just a, it's a day of celebrating that. Right. And that's kind of what we've created of this day. And, you know, I think one thing that I really kind of put forward now that I'm very confident around what I want to do, what I know to be best for me and what I know to be a healthy way of approaching the day is leading by example, right? So there's a reason, you know, pretty much every, the only food I really take anywhere when I go somewhere, like, hey, could you con con you know, contribute something to this, you know, party, meal, gathering, et cetera, is a fruit tray or a veggie tray or both. And in that way, I just want to lead by example and s just bring something that I know is going to be a healthy option for people and encourage people not out that not outwardly say like hey everyone should have this because it's healthy <laughs> but like just bring it and having it there right because having it there is better than it not being there and no one having the option of reaching for it right or having a, an out when they would have reached for another you know trisket and you know three layer dip they can maybe they're just stuffed on that but that's the only option maybe now they have an option to reach for some fruit or some light veggies or something that's going to you know, be a healthy option that isn't going to be this calorie bomb every bite they take that day. Um, and this, this is also along the same lines of leading by example, right? So like, like Alex mentioned, like take your family on a walk. You know, one thing that, um, I'm really proud of that we've started to implement within family vacations with my mom's family, um, or my stepdad's family rather with my mom and all that is every time we're on vacation, we go on a very long walk every single day. So we usually go on these like, our like summer vacations always somewhere around a beach um, or on the beach. And the last couple of years, it's been a thing where those who wanna go, it's it's kind of pre-planned and scheduled. Hey, after breakfast, we're gonna go on a very long walk down the beach, right? We're gonna pick a point and go down and back. And you're gonna get us, you know, time to visit with your family, you know, you get to kind of group up or take someone solo. If you need to have a conversation that's away from everyone, you get some exercise. And that's the same thing that, you know, as Alex was mentioning, like lead by example, like take your family on a walk or go at least if even if you're, you're going on a walk and ask people if they'd love to go and just say, you know, if they ask why, just, you know, let them know that, hey, this makes me feel better. My food digests well and it's time for us to visit. And I'd love for you to I'd love for you to join, but no pressure if you don't want to go. Um, but yeah, leading by example is huge. And this kind of, if you can't, you know, if it's hard to understand in the context of Thanksgiving, it's like, it's the same advice I give clients when they go out to eat with a group is if you know what you want, if you know you how you want to approach that meal, be the first to order because you're going to set the tone for the rest of the group, right? There may be another person in that group that isn't going to speak up that also wants to choose a healthier option, but due to where they're at mentally or emotionally, they're going to cave to the pressures of what other people order, right? So if no one else orders something healthy, they don't want to be the only person that orders like something healthy or like a salad or something like that, right? 
And so it's along the same lines as that. Be the first to order, lead, lead by example, and encourage people that you love in your life to do something that's good for them. Yeah. And uh, if you have situations come up, especially with the holidays where people might make comments about how you're eating or what you're doing or how you're choosing to spend your time, I would highly recommend our past few episodes um, are going to be really applicable to that, where we have an episode talking about peer pressure, as well as an episode talking about the all or nothing approach, which I did want to bring up just for a little bit here of not having the mentality of, oh, well, I've already messed up or I really don't know how to track this. So I'm just going to F it and go all in because you're only one bite, one meal or one decision away from being back on track. And truthfully, if you're in a spot where you get to that point of that F it, it is really, I understand the mentality of like, I've already messed up. So why does it matter? But recognizing if you've messed up and then you keep going, you're just creating a larger, uh, problem that you have to kind of come back from. And so being able to recognize it doesn't mean because I've made a mistake now doesn't matter. It's I've made a mistake. Now I'm just one decision away from being back on track or being back where I need to be. So definitely go check out those episodes as they're going to be packed full with some more actionable advice there on those specific topics. Um, And I wanted to give a few other actionable things like when it comes to your plate sizes. I know sometimes the plates that come out for our holidays are much bigger than our normal plates that we eat on on a day-to-day basis. And that can be really difficult when it comes to portioning things. I even struggle with it when it comes to our own plates and bowls. If I'm using something different and I'm like, that looks like so much less or that looks like so much more because of the size of the plate. And so being able to grab a plate that's a similar size to what you're used to or being able to visualize what that is within that plate to kind of give yourself a guideline of what it looks like for portion sizes. Um, And then something that we mentioned in passing is looking at fiber intake. So a lot of the foods associated with the holidays are going to be higher in carbs and fats, which again, isn't inherently bad to be higher in carbs and fats for certain foods. It's all about the harmony or balance that you're looking for and what your goals are. And I always think additive instead of being subtract, being subtracting from it. Um, And so looking at it of saying, okay, I have something that's carbs and fats, I'm going to add protein to it to make it more of a complete meal. But circling around to fiber, this can be something that really causes some digestive distress of you are in taking higher sugar, higher carbs, higher fats, possibly lower protein, maybe lower movement that day, lower water, and then lower fiber. And that can really cause digestion to be off. That can cause your sleep to be off. And so just being aware of what that looks like and possibly ensuring that you get enough fiber leading into the day, especially if you're traveling on either end of the day, that can make things even more difficult. And so just being aware of what you do on a day-to-day basis to check the boxes. What you do 90% of the time matters more than what you do 10% of the time. That doesn't mean what you do 10% of the time doesn't matter, but it matters a little bit less than what you do that 90% of the time. So if you're on it, you're getting everything done, you feel good, being able to indulge in a holiday and have something that makes you feel good and be present is great. So being able to really look at it of what do I want out of this holiday? What are my goals right now? And how do I want to feel at the end? I can almost guarantee if you ask yourself those questions and put a little bit of forethought into the holidays or into going out to dinner or a trip or whatever it may be, you're going to come out on the other end in a much better spot. Because if you're not going into the holiday and looking at what are my expectations of this holiday, then you're almost always going to be a little bit disappointed because you haven't set what that is, not only your effort to match your expectations, but what you're expecting overall, and especially looking at the input data going into that. So those are uh, a ton of things that we go over when it comes to our clients, um, as well as talking about stress and sleep quality going into the holidays, because stress is normally higher. Again, you might be traveling, sleeping in different beds, sleep is a little bit off. So the more things that you can do that check the boxes for your personal non-negotiables are going to be so extremely beneficial. And being able to care for your body, your mental, physical, emotional health, and the way that is going to serve you so that you can keep on enjoying the holidays instead of dreading them or feeling like you need to survive them. 
I think that one tip I give to clients that I forgot to touch on was just thinking of it in singular meal context, because it's not going to be for the majority of people not tracking that day. And so it's, it's more about how can I get the uh, best out of this particular meal? And I, I think that that's an easy way. Cause if you are going to three homes and in one day, maybe you do overindulge in, in one of those meals and then feel as though that as Sue talked about how uh, it's just kind of like a, well, forget it. I'm just going to go ahead and just over indulge every meal and being able to look at it in those singular contexts seem to make things a little bit easier for your mind to, to work through. And so that's one thing that even, you know, myself, um, implore, uh, each day or each, I guess, holiday. <laughs> Yeah. So that is what we wanted to be able to chat about when it came to the holidays and how to navigate through them instead of just surviving through them. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would love if you left any comments of what helped you or what you want to be able to take forward into your holiday, or if there's something that we didn't mention here that you do for the holidays that really set you up for success, we would absolutely love to hear it. And I'm sure the other people reading the comments would really appreciate it as well. So especially going into the holiday season. I know Canadian Thanksgiving has already taken place, but we have American Thanksgiving coming up as well as Christmas and the um, winter season. So a lot of fun holidays going into New Year's. So really being able to ask yourself the questions that I mentioned of what do I want to happen within this holiday? How do I want to feel? And what are my expectations or what do I want to be able to indulge in? So really having those honest conversations with yourself, you're going to set yourself up for success. And we can't wait to hear about all of the holidays from our clients and you guys as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one.